is not a liar. has said multiple times like the climate change agenda is a hoax. But I'm from Cambodia. I have seen a destroyed country, the famines, the droughts. He thinks you're all stupid. He's lying to you. Look at each one of his facts. Look at it all. They're all funded by fossil fuel agenda. You need to understand that this man thinks you're stupid. He thinks that you, he can lie to you and get away with it. But he can't because fossil fuels are destroying my future. They're destroying your future. How can you look at your children in their eyes? and tell them that you are killing their future. I think that the climate change agenda absolutely is a hoax because it has nothing to do with the climate. All right, folks. Well, before we start today, I do want to really quickly plug that we did do a video yesterday addressing the Trump Vivek beef. And the only reason I say that is because I don't want to see any comments of people saying, Vince, why don't you talk about that? That's the bigger story. We addressed it yesterday. Feel free to go watch that video. But today's video is about something different. OK, sound good. All right. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, so Vivek Ramaswamy this week in particular has been confronted by at least three different climate change protesters who have tried to shout him down or disrupt his event, which of course on one hand is understandable because Vivek, and good for him, has been one of the most aggressive Republicans on the climate change issue. He's been willing to say that their entire agenda is a hoax, it's built on lies, it's not scientific, but obviously on the flip side that's bound to anger the climate change cult, and in many ways it is a religious cult and we'll expand on that thought a little bit later today but you know at the same time i also find it a little bit weird that i kid you not these three things all happened at his events in Iowa on like literally the same week. I mean, he's been saying what he's been saying about the climate change stuff for almost an entire year now. And yet all of the sudden, it almost seems coordinated, right? I'm not saying it is. I will point out, however, that paid protesters are a real thing. I'm not saying it's true of this case. I'm just speculating again. It's interesting. We have like three different videos and maybe more. I have no idea of this stuff happening, but still, regardless, we will talk about that and react to it here today. But first, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And without further ado, let's just get into this because we have uh, quite a few different videos to react to. So here is volume one, example one for the court of and this is the most aggressive one we're going to have today, by the way, of these young climate protesters just screaming down Vivek's event. See for yourself. You're lying to everyone okay. in this room. Do you know who? Do you know who Steve Kuhn is? Do you know who Steve Kuhn is? That's the climate change. This is the climate change. The climate is on fire. The climate is on fire. The climate is on fire. Okay, right off the gate. So you hear what they're saying. Uh, Vivek is a liar. The planet is on fire. And it's like ridiculous behavior, right? The reason I say this is a religious cult, besides the fact that I think it should be obvious to people, you know, they like, look what's going on. Look at the behavior. Do you not see what I'm seeing here? Is because when you really break down what they're about, it has all those characteristics, right? Because they have, they have their own doomsday prophecy, they have their own scripture that they quote over and over again. We'll point that out maybe later in the video. And most importantly, they have this idea of sort of repenting for your sins, right? It's like, because think about it, every single climate change policy is designed to make your life worse and to make trying to raise a family more expensive. That's really what it's about, right? You know, that, that's why they're against nuclear energy, for instance, is because that's too easy of a solution. It's about the punishment, right? You need to repent for your sin of, I don't know, being white, being Western. I have no idea. And you notice that whenever someone disagrees with them, you know, it's not just a minor issue of political disagreement because you would think, hey, energy policy, that's like that sounds like one of the most boring political issues. Why would it get people so riled up? It only gets people riled up again because in their eyes, you are a heretic. You have committed blasphemy, right? So keep that in mind as we watch this and, and, and you see the behavior here. Uh, it's very telling to me. But anyways, uh, let's get into this. The planet is on fire. The planet is a liar. The planet is on fire. The planet is a liar. The planet is on fire. The planet is on fire. 
Thank you. You are Thank a liar. You. All right, guys, we're done with this. You've had your you chance. You are a liar. You've made the your point. The is on fire. You've made your point. Very normal behavior. Definitely not a cult, by the way. Definitely not a cult. You are a liar. You know, they're, they're definitely not basically trying to cast their spell, right? Kind of chant their own rosary of just like saying this phrase they think will, I don't know. I, I don't know, but you see what I'm saying, right? The planet is on fire. At the this point, anybody who wants, ex excuse me, anybody who wants to actually have an open conversation can stay. If not, you can show yourself out. The planet is on fire. He thinks you're all stupid. He thinks so you're all stupid. You made your point. Now, would you like to actually ask the question? Would you like the answer to the question? How do you now? look your children in would the eyes? Like, no, they don't. Would you, you like children in the eyes? Would you, you like an answer to the question or not? Because I think you you're actually. You lie to your kids like you're lying to us. They don't want an answer. Looking for the country. You lie to your kids like you're lying to us. That's actually going right on in this country. Stop. He's lying can I say right to our Sure, you can, sir. Yes, sir. Stop. Listen, I'm tired. I started my travel to get here. We're tired, two, I'm tired, I'm tired of the planet. I'm tired of the planet. Running this country and, and saying they're not doing it in their own interest. Man, all the way from Puerto Rico. I and I said, quiet, quiet, quiet. I didn't come to listen to you. You know what happened in Puerto you. Rico? You see the effects of Hurricane Maria? Just sit down. I came here. I'm tired. Thank you. Fossil so fuels are destroying our planet Jansel and this man profits from it. With my wife. I just... This man profits from it. How does he profit from it? Okay, I, you know, I've heard the accusations about Vivek, right? Bought out by Pharma, bought out by George Soros. I don't necessarily agree with those things, but I've heard them. Where is he profiting from the fossil fuel industry? I, I, I don't know. That, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. I, I, I don't think there's really evidence of that. But at the same time, there's not evidence of their quote unquote scientific claims either, right? He brings up Puerto Rico. Obviously, there was a bad hurricane in Puerto Rico, I believe, when I was in high school. There's no evidence. I mean, bad hurricanes happen. There's no scientific proof that not only the hurricane was that bad because of climate change, but like fossil fuels had a specifically direct impact and it was the reason that hurricane happened, right? That's ridiculous logic. It doesn't make any sense. But I would point this out almost in the same way that certain crowds of evangelicals, sort of like the doomsday end times people, um, you know, and I'm Christian, but I don't necessarily subscribe to sort of the way they approach it sometimes where it's, you know, anything that happens in the world, this means the end times is here. Like this is directly out of revelation. This guy's the antichrist. That guy's the antichrist. But you know what I'm describing? That same behavior is sort of what you see from them. Every time a bad weather event happens, which newsflash, bad weather has always happened, not only is it because of climate change, but it's directly because of fossil fuels. Again, where's the evidence of that? Is that substantiated? No, it's not, okay? It, the moment it happens, they scream these things. And again, but you see the parallel behaviors there? It's very true. I just want to listen to this man. I had enough. Just sit down. You already, he lied you're already, to you. He you're lied already asked all of us. Ask your he question. lied to all of us. You're done. You're done. Stand out for himself. Sir, you have made your point. At this point, if you don't have dialogue, we're going to ask you to leave. At this yeah. point, you've got the microphone. You are, let's I will go back answer your question let's go back if you stop. Me. It's nice to see Vivek get aggressive for once, okay? Because usually he's very nice to these people, and that's his style. That's the way he does it. Good for him. But in this case... This is not a one on one, right? This is not the video of the angry, like pro choicer who's one person in the crowd. You're outnumbered in this situation. There's like at least five people doing this. Yeah, you got to just tell them to shut up and get out. I agree. There are 150 people in this room. We're not going to disrespect everybody else who came here. If you want to sit down and listen, ask a question the same way, you can stay with not the Yeah, 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 yeah. Bye bye. I have the Bye. loudest voice in the room here, please. This is not a campaign event. It's a private event organized by Indo-American, a small group, a small group. We have questions about climate. Have you seen the, have you seen Sir, you've asked a question. I heard it. I heard you. You had your floor. You had your floor. You stop it now. Everyone had their floor. Yeah. Now. Put your banners down. Yep. If you are not part of Indo-American PAC or invited guests, please, please, please vacate please. the room. Especially you made your point with your banners. 
Thank you. What if we are Indo-American and we've you seen the effects of the climate crisis? Sir, man, you have blind. You have my grandma died leave. of lung cancer because of fossil fuels. Sir, fuel. you are being respect my disrespectful of, of everybody here. Because of fossil fuels in Nepal. What? We're going to have. My grandma died because of lung cancer because of fossil fuels in Nepal. Again, how do you know it was because of fossil fuels? Like, I'm sorry for her, but I, I doubt the guy has proof of that. Okay, let me just say that. Yeah, people get lung cancer, you know? And, and maybe it was from something in the air, something she was breathing. Was it necessarily fossil fuels? I don't know. Is it proof that the whole planet needs to get rid of fossil fuels? No. But again, this is not a scientific movement, right? It's not a scientific movement. Just going to say that. Ask you to, we're going to ask you to, anybody who's disrespectful, you're going to be removed at this point. Because you you're, made, you have you're your, you've selling had, out our country you've had your chance. For your podcast, for, your, gonna ask you to for leave. your private company. Thank you, thank you for your theory. Thank you. $50 million. He owns $50 million. Thank you. 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 The accusation of being a paid shill is just hilarious because these climate people act as if, oh, we're just a bunch of angry grassroots people who are fed up and want to save the planet. It's like, no, no, actually, it's not. Uh, you know, you're backed by ESG, which comes from BlackRock, which is one of the wealthiest firms in the world, if not the I, I don't know. Check the number there. OK, you're backed by the World Economic Forum. The world's billionaires are pushing this stuff. No, that, that's not the case at all. And you want to say you're, you want to say fossil fuels are trying to sell out this country. OK, who is trying to lower the average quality of life of Americans? Is it the fossil fuel industry, which I'm not defending everything to do, but is it the fossil fuel industry whose chief goal more or less is to provide, you know, f energy to the American population? Or is it the climate change agenda? Who, again, is trying to make energy inaccessible, trying to lower quality of life. They want to build these 15 minute cities where people have no mobility, basically destroy the American dream. It's evil. Frankly, it's evil. Who's selling out the country? And when you really look into it, who has more dollars behind them? Just something to think about. Thank you. There's a, there's a blizzard outside. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, did you guys catch that? She said people are dying because of fossil fuels. Her evidence, wait for it, there's a blizzard outside. Obviously, if you know what's going on, it's really cold in Iowa. It's cold in the whole country, basically, right now. But, you know, there's a blizzard in Iowa. What does that have to do with climate? How is that proof that fossil fuel driven climate change is this existential threat to humanity. There's nothing scientific about that, okay? Wow, there's a very bad blizzard going on right now. Again, you can't just point to the weather and say, see, fossil fuels are doing this. That's not a scientific movement. You could, however, write if it's a religious movement. In the same way, your evangelical grandpa on Facebook posts that, like, blurry... A, you know, 2010 looking meme again, every time something happens and says this is right out of the book of revelations. Same thing here. It's religious behavior that's going on. It's not a scientific movement. OK. If you're being respectful, you can stay. Thank you. Yeah, so all we got from that exchange is Vivek is lying. People are dying. The proof? The proof that the world is on fire? Is there's a blizzard outside. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that's the, sci the scientific movement that is the climate change, people. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. Okay, that's just part one, ladies and gentlemen. You ready for more? So again, this so the, that first clip I showed was January 12th. Okay, January 10th, this is actually a little bit before, um, similar incident goes down. It does end here a little bit more constructively because you didn't have a total mob of people screaming, but let's react here to the second clip 
of the climate change people. Here we go. Do it. Somebody has very eager to ask questions. Always a great sign when that happens. I'm excited. Sorry, thank you. My yes. name is Layla, and when I was 15 years old, I lost my home and my high school in a climate disaster. 20 members of my family, all who immigrated from Pakistan, lost everything they owned. And I'm just wondering, how can you claim to stand for my generation while you call climate change a hoax? I'm just... I'm so this is a, a question. Okay, so here we go again, right? Every bad thing that happens with the weather, which is unfortunate, okay? Yeah, look, I'm not downplaying what happened to her house or whatever, but it's not scientific to just link every bad weather event to fossil fuels, okay? People lost their homes to weather events, newsflash for generations, for centuries, thousands of years, right? And secondly, on the question of Gen Z, right, you're selling out our generation. I mean, in all fairness, I see it as the absolute opposite, right? Because I, I actually view these climate change people with a high degree of resentment because the way I see it is they're actually trying to ruin my future because they're going to make energy unaffordable. They're going to degrade everyone's quality of life. They're going to take away like the, you know, the American dream. Oh, I want a car. They're going to take that ability away. They're going to force these electric cars on everyone that don't work and that, you know, don't have range or anything. Take away people's mobility. They want to push these 15 minute cities on everyone, right? They want to destroy people's quality of life. And when I look at, hey, the future American dream for Gen Z. These climate change people, in my opinion, are one of the biggest enemies to that future. Okay. It's not a small thing for me either, but anyways, let, let, let's let's take a listen to what Vivek has to say. Question about climate change. What, you're Layla? Yes. Why, how can you call it a hoax? Yeah. How can you claim to stand for my, me and my future while you call it that? So thank you for asking the question. And one of, one of our rules is you don't have to agree with what I say to ask a question. We have free speech and open debate in this country, and so I thank you for coming here to ask in a respectful way, a question that you deserve an answer to. How do I say that the climate change, what do I say, the climate change agenda is a hoax because it has nothing to do with the climate. So let's have a serious exactly. discussion about this. Our oceans are the temperature I'm going to let you, tubs. you get to finish asking your question. I'm going to even give you the mic. You get to finish asking your question, but then I'm going to answer it after that. Is that a deal? Uh, okay, good. Yeah, good. yeah I'm just wondering, how can you look your children in the eye while you, you basically deny that our future is literally on fire and our planet is burning. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's not a loaded question. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some hard facts. About. This is an issue I've spent a lot of time on long before I ran for president. This is near and dear to me. I was probably the leading opponent in the private sector of the ESG movement, the environmental, social and governance movement. Yeah. Which is basically based above, above all on one thing. The basis that climate change is an existential risk to humanity and we need to stop burning fossil fuels. So let's take a minute on this one and go deeper than we usually would because you asked it a question. Eight times as many people die of cold temperatures rather than warm ones. Eight times as many people mm. died last year of cold temperatures rather than warm ones. Mm. The earth is more covered with green surface area today than it was a century ago because carbon dioxide is plant food. The number of climate disaster related deaths is down by 98% over the last century. The and you know, that's an important point too. You know, people may, sound, may, people may ridicule the way I say this, but listen to me on this for real. Why does the climate movement never really put an emphasis on, I don't know, planting trees, making America more green? In fact, I'd argue they want to do the opposite, right? They attack rural Americans. They, they want to crowd everyone into these cities. Look at the way they themselves live. I mean, they live in where? New York City, you know, one of the most polluted places in the world. And a big important thing with plants is that, you know, it's been a while take out since I've taken science class. I forget if it's evaporation or transpiration that does the cooling effect. But long story short, you know, when you go outside next to, if you have a grassy lawn, right, on a hot day, you'll notice it's cooler there when it's just, the, as compared to when you just have concrete around you, right? Plants, green stuff, actually cools down the, the local temperature in an area. And when you do that over massive scales of the country and the planet, 
ultimately plants have an effect on climate change, right? But notice what the climate agenda wants to do on that front. They want to urbanize everything, right? They're big fans of that for some odd reason. You know, they just want concrete, concrete. They attack people for living rurally. Again, they want these 15 minute cities and stuff. They want to destroy America's forest to build vast farms of, you know, solar panels and wind turbines, just ugly, disgusting stuff that destroys the local environment. And it's like, that's interesting point, right? It's a known fact that plants cool off the local temperature and by the way also absorb carbon dioxide which they claim is the biggest greenhouse gas in terms of the climate it's actually not that's not scientifically true but whatever that's what they're so obsessed with is co2 but they never talk about this stuff and actually their policies are anti-trees anti-planting stuff you know something to think about the number of people who died of a heat wave a tornado a hurricane any other natural disaster a drought or otherwise is down by 98 percent for every interesting for every I, I, I remember our deal we made a deal i gave you the mic i'm gonna answer your question okay. I, i'm sorry i keep pausing but I, I have a lot to say on this issue okay so going back to what i said about the religious thing he brings up all these stats. What's her response? The 99% number that you hear all the time. And it basically goes, 99% of scientists agree that climate change is real. That's not a rebuttal to the things he's actually saying. Okay? It's not. What is it, though? It's a recitation of a religious scripture that they have. And that's one of them. Don't you know? It used to be 97%. I guess now it's 99. 99% of scientists agree with this statement. And it's like, okay, so what do we do about it? We're talking about climate change policy. We're talking about the, but no, it's just the scientists say the Holy scripture to them says same thing. Same thing. Okay. So we had that deal. Fair enough. Cause this is, these are important facts. Nine, for every 100 people that died in 1920, two people died today of a climate-related disaster. So mm. against that backdrop, do I think we need to abandon our modern way of life because of some infinitesimally small increase in global surface temperatures when more people are dying of cold temperatures than warm ones? No, I do not. That's when the exactly my point, too. the climate disaster-related death rate has gone down by 98%, do I think we need to abandon our modern way of life, abandon fossil fuels? No, I do not. Do I think it justifies a carbon dioxide capture pipeline using eminent domain to being built across this state to seize the land of innocent farmers? No, I do not. And so the answer is this. Pipelines? You oppose all pipelines because you don't think farmers, necessary. farmers and, and everyday people should be choking in our air. Air is like not. So I'm going to answer. I, I'm answering your question, but it may not be the answer you want. But I'm giving you a hard answer to your question. Here's the truth. And in this one, I want, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes to because I think that you might even be on the same side of understanding the hoax here. The biggest opponents to fossil fuels in the United States are also the biggest opponent, are also perfectly fine, by the way, with shifting those same carbon emissions to places like China. Now, here's a, here's a further mystery. You would think if you're fighting global climate change, those same carbon emissions in China, how does that work? They're over there in China, but we stop them over here. Interesting how that works. Now you go one level deeper. The same people who are most opposed to fossil fuels in the United States are also the biggest opponents to nuclear energy, which is the greatest form of carbon free energy production known to mankind. This does yeah, because again, it's not a scientific movement. It's not, you know, how, how, you know, U.S. is 15 percent of global carbon emissions. If we got rid of all of our fossil fuels, which would basically send us into the pre-industrial age. And, but regardless, if we did that, you bring it down by 15 percent. OK, what about the other 85 percent of carbon emissions? If they say that the world is ending in 10 years, how is that going to save it? How is exporting it to China going to save it? Why are they against nuclear energy? But again, because it's not a scientific movement, it's a cult. And, uh, and the, the, the goal of their political agenda ultimately is to push control, right? They, they want to control you. They want to kind of just destroy America, destroy the Westerners and their way of life and all that. And that's what it's about. It doesn't make sense. I'm not done yet. I'm not. I'm, ex excuse me. I'm not done yet, ma'am. And we, we want to be respectful. I want to finish. I'm going to finish this. And we're going to go to the next question. 
The answer is the climate change agenda has nothing to do with the climate, because if it did, these people would be embracing nuclear energy and these people would be opposed to China doing what they are. This is about China right. catching up to the United States of America. And I refuse to flog ourselves wearing a hair shirt for a quasi religious cult that has caused us to abandon our modern way of life. More people are dying of bad climate change policies than they are of climate change itself. And I will not stand for that level of an assault on our modern way of life. So 100%. It's not hyperbole either. People will die of some of these climate change policies. They will. Because, and I would say, yes, even in the West, I would say it would probably happen. Because you're going to have electricity shortages. You're going to have fuel shortages. What is that going to do? But especially think about the third world and how catastrophic that would be. Yeah, I think that is a completely accurate assessment. I think another important point he made was that what's the opportunity cost? And this is something I've said for a while, which is even if everything they're saying about the climate change is true, like, hey, we're going to have rising sea levels. We're going to have more severe weather events. OK, is that worth the opportunity cost of their policy, which is basically to destroy everyone's way of life? OK, and I say no, because I say, OK, even if every all of your projections for the future climate are true, which, by the way, I kind of doubt they are because they change every 10 years. I don't think they really know. Like, I don't think they really can tell the future on this stuff. But even if it's all true, then my solution would be, OK, if there's going to be stronger hurricanes, if there's going to be higher sea levels. Then we build better infrastructure, right? We innovate. We do what human beings do. It's not impossible. It's not ridiculous at all. Hey, some, a lot of our infrastructure is outdated. It might be a good time to update it and make it stronger anyway. But of course, it's not a scientific movement. I keep saying that, but it's true. Okay, last video. We're going to speed through this because I know this video is pretty long. But uh, here's the last clip. And one thing I want to say is that the girl in this video actually very much reminds me of a uh, a couple individuals I went to high school with that obviously I had pretty big political disagreements with, but check it out. Starts with the fact that the climate change agenda is a hoax. Liar! You're a liar! I am not a liar, I'm speaking the truth. So I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a deal. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make I'm gonna I'm gonna make a deal with you. I'm gonna make it no I'm gonna, we're in the state house, we're in the house of the people here. So I'm gonna make a deal with this woman. What's your name? Olivia. Olivia. Olivia, I'm gonna give you the microphone for 60 seconds. I'm gonna let you make your point. The deal is you're gonna let me respond to it, be respectful to everybody else who's here. Are you gonna to agree to this deal? Yes. Okay, you pledge to agree to that deal, I'm gonna give you the mic and you get to ask your question for 60 seconds and I'm gonna address it. has said multiple times like the climate change agenda is a hoax. But I'm from Cambodia. I have seen a destroy country, the famines, the droughts. He thinks you're all stupid. He's lying to you. Look at each one of his facts. Look at it all. They're all funded by fossil fuel agenda. You need to understand that this man thinks you're stupid. He thinks that you, he can lie to you and get away with it. But he can't because fossil fuels are destroying my future. They're destroying your future. How can you look at your children in their eyes and tell them you are killing their future. I'm seeing it happen all across America. I'm seeing it happen here, and it's happened to my country in Cambodia. So we do another year. Will you oppose all pipelines, regardless of regardless? That girl definitely did model UN, uh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to play his answer because he basically gives the same answer. And, you know, I'm not going to kind of repeat the video itself. But yeah, long story short, ladies and gentlemen, I again am a little suspicious. Why did this keep happening in the same week? I have no idea. But I will say I do appreciate that Vivek is one of the bold Republicans who's willing to call out the climate agenda for exactly which it is. Right. Not climate change, because obviously the climate change is common sense, but the climate change agenda, what they want to do about it is a hoax. It is 100 percent true. These people don't really make any sense. You notice they don't actually really bring to the table any solutions. They just want to yell at you. 
Why? Again, because it's a cult. It's not about science. This is true. All right, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. Uh, you know, do you agree with my assessment on the climate change movement and what they're really about? Be sure to let me know. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Join us tonight, probably 7 p.m. Eastern time for our live coverage of the Iowa caucus here on this YouTube channel. And until then, when I see you tonight, Alpha Moves Only, God bless. Have a very good day. And peace.